In this video, we are going to learn how to name the cycloalkanes and how to draw the chair conformation of cyclohexane. Let's get started with the first example. Give you pack names for the following cycloalkanes. The first one we have to count the number of the carbons on the cycle, that are five. So the parent name is going to be cyclopentane. But it has two substituents. In case they are alkyl groups, we have to name them alphabetically. So this is an ethyl group, this is a methyl group. One is going to start from here, two, three, not one, two, three, four. We have to keep as low as possible the number of substituent. So it's going to be one ethyl, three methyl. Let's take a look at the second example. We have a cyclobutane here, but the substituent has more carbon than the cyclobutane. So the substituent is going to serve as a parent chain. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five carbon. It's going to be pentane. And the cyclobutane is going to be cyclobutyl at the position one, two, three. So it's going to be three, cyclobutyl pentane. In the case that the number of the ring is the same with the number of substituent, I mean number of carbons, you're going to take as a parent chain the ring. Let's move to the third example. In this case, you have to consider also these wedge lines that represent that chlorine is coming above the plane and this dashed line that represent that hydrogen is behind the plane. So in this case, you have to consider the two substituents, that is chlorine and methyl. If they are in the same direction, that means that they are cis. If they are in the opposite direction, that means that they are trans. In this case, they are in opposite. Chlorine is above the plane and the methyl is behind the plane. So we are going to use trans in the name. So in case of halogens, we are going to treat them as an alkyl group. So in this case, it's going to be trans. The number one is going to be to the chlorine because we have to consider them in alphabetical order. C is uh, before M. So it's going to be trans one chloro, two, three, four. This is going to be four methyl cyclohexane. In the fourth example, you see that the two methyl groups are on the same side of the plane. So they are on cis. So it's going to be cis. It doesn't matter here one or two or two or one is the same. Cis. Uh, now you have two substituents that are in the, that has the same name. So in this case, you're going to use D as a prefix. So in this case, you're going to use cis one, two, D methyl cyclohexane. These are the naming for these compounds. Let's move now to the chair conformation of cyclohexane. Cyclohexane has a formula C6H12. It can have a structure like this and that can go ring flip to a structure like this. In order to draw these structures, it's simple. You can use your own way, but just draw two parallel lines and connect them. And in order to make ring flick, write on the different side the parallel lines and you can make like this. What we are going to do here? We are going to fill them with hydrogens. At the first compound, we are going to fill only the axial position. These are considered axial position. And uh, if you do ring flip, axial position are going to the equatorial position. So if you consider this one, it's going to go here. Okay. And the same for this one, 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 and the same for this one. So it's like you take this side here and move it down and take this side here and move it up, you know, stretch the structure in different ways. So in this case, this axial position here is going to stay here up 
side to the other rearrangement of the cyclohexane chair conformation. And this one that is down is going to stay here down. Be careful, do not confuse this. This is going to be in this direction to be parallel with these two. Okay. And uh, in case you go to this one, this is going to be up here, again in, in equatorial position. This one that is down is going to be down here, and this one that is up is going to be, is going to be up here to the equatorial position. And this one that is here is going to be down here. Okay? Cyclohexan has a plane like this roughly plane and the, this side here is upside and this side here is downside. We need this to understand bec because we need to write cis trans conformations. Okay, if we have in the equatorial position parallel, parallel, we have six hydrogens and if we do ring flip here, it's gonna be like this, like this, like this, like this. This position here, this one, let's say, is going to go down here, okay? And it's going to move from the equatorial to axial position. This position here is going to be upside here. This position here is going to be downside here. This position here is going to be upside here. And this position here is going to be downside here. And this position here is going to be upside here. So all the equatorial position is going to shift to axial position. Here, all the axial position is going to shift to equatorial position. Keep this in mind. Let's move to an example to demonstrate this. Draw two chair conformation for each of the following compound. Trans 1 chloro 2 methyl cyclohexane and cis 1 chloro 2 methyl cyclohexane. Which is more stable? In general, the equatorial position are more stable than axial position. So let's draw first as a compound, trans 1 chloro. It means a chloro is going to be like this, and methyl is going to be like this, or the reverse. And the others are the hydrogens. And this is A, and in the B point, cis 1 chloro, if you keep the chlorine like this, and also the metal is going to be in the same side and the hydrogens on the back. Now let's write the chair conformation for these two compounds. Let's start with point A. So let's draw the chair like conformation. In the case of the chlorine, let's place chlorine for example here. In order to make the most stable compound, we need to place that in the equatorial position. So it's going to be like this, chlorine. The methyl group is trans compared to the chlorine. So the chlorine is downside, the methyl is going to be up. As you can see, in this case, both chlorine and both methyl are in equatorial position. So this is going to be the most stable compound, but we are going to do ring flip to demonstrate that the others are in axial position. So let's make... Oh, we got a subscriber. So let's make uh, the ring flip. So let's rewrite this one. Now the chlorine is going to move down here and the metal is going to move down here. So the chlorine from the equatorial position is going to move to the axial position and the metal from the equatorial position is going to move to the axial position. In this case, you see that you have hydrogens also in the axial position. And the problem is that you have steric strains in this scenario. That's why this conformation is more stable than this one. Let's write for the point B. For the point B, let's draw again the chair conformation for cyclohexane. Okay, so we have chlorine, let's place it in the equatorial position to try to make the most stable one. 
and we have methyl that is on the same side of the chlorine, so it's going to be in the axial position here. In this case, chlorine is stable here in the equatorial position, but the methyl is interrupted by this two that is also called 1,3 diaxial interaction. 1,3 because 1 here, 2, 3 carbons away is a hydrogen, and 1, 2, 3 carbons away is another hydrogen. That's why it's called 1,3 diaxial interaction. So in this case, the compound is not so stable because of the metal. And uh, in order, let's make the ring flip and to, to say something else in this case. Chlorine is going to move into the axial position now to move down. And the metal is going to move to the equatorial position. Now the problem is chlorine that is going to interact with this hydrogen here and this hydrogen here. But according to a table that I will show now, chlorine interaction with hydrogens is smaller compared to the metal. So on this scenario, this means that this is the most stable compound. Let's move to the last example. Draw two chair conformation of mantle that until which is more stable. In this case, we have three substituent. Mantle is a uh, an alcohol because it has a hydroxy group but is not the point to give the real name it's the point to draw it in the chair like conformation so let's start from the OH first try to make the most stable one we place OH here in the equatorial position in terms of numbering this is going to be the one this is going to be the second third fourth this is going to be the fifth it does not work in the reverse because the number count is going to be higher, so it's going to go wrong with the naming. So in this case, we have at the second the, what is this called? Isopropyl. Uh, do you remember? Uh, this here is going to be trans compared to the OH, so it's going to be upside. Uh, this is first, second, third, fourth, and the sixth. This is gonna be on the same side as OH. So in this case, it's gonna be in equatorial position. As you see, all the substituents are in the equatorial position. For sure, this is gonna be the most stable compound. But for the sake of this example, we are going to write also the ring flip. Uh, so, OH now is going to move down from the equatorial to the axial position. This is going to move up to the axial position. And uh, this here, that is this one here, is going to move down again to the axial position. As you can see now, let's feel other hydrogens, we have interaction of all the compounds with hydrogens. So as you can see for sure, this is less stable than the first one. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Peace.